We have gotten a massive update from the Pokemon Company about how certain mechanics work inside of Pokemon Sword and Shield, and I am super excited. Something that I wanted to know more about than anything else in the games are Brilliant Aura Pokemon. How do we get more of those Yellow Aura Pokemon to spawn? What benefits do they give exactly? And is there anything else that goes on with catching Pokemon? So that brings us to the update that we had earlier today. I covered a video on it talking mostly about the shiny hunting aspects. So if you want to check that out, I recommend going to the description down below, checking out all of my other Pokemon Sword and Shield content as well. And if this video helped out or if you enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like, please. Share it with your friends on Twitter, social media, Discord, Facebook, etc. It helps more than you can imagine. But let's get into it because now we're going to be talking about the Brilliant Aura Pokemon. So, what do they do? Well, they have an unusual move, such as an egg move, and they also have two to three IVs in their stats. Some people are like, oh, you only get two from them, but three is also common. So, that happens, and then you still have another chance of getting a 4 IV just from RNG. And if you're catching or encountering hundreds of them to get the full benefit, that seems like a possibility. So, Brilliant Pokemon have a 1.3 times chance of appearing at 20 encounters, and then if you've done one, then those Pokemon may appear. But what counts as an encounter, and how do you find out if you've even encountered that Pokemon? So what you want to do is you want to go to the Pokedex. And then you can see with number battle. So number battled actually just means catching or fainting the Pokemon. If you run away from it, it doesn't count as battling that Pokemon. So if you're trying to build up this encounter number, it's not chaining. Chaining doesn't exist in Pokemon Sword and Shield as we thought about it. And even trying to get more species of Pokemon to spawn isn't really chaining either. It's kind of weird. But this is what we know so far. You just battle the Pokemon, and then good things can happen. So depending on how many you battle, you get extra effects. Now, Shiny Chance caps at 500. That's some insanity. But if you just want the better chance of getting a Brilliant Aura Pokemon for those IVs, for Watt Farming or anything like that, you get two times the chance at 100 encounters. Just kind of like tying everything together. That's what I love about Pokemon Sword and Shield. This game respects your time. Because if you're on like a long shiny hunting chain or something, you have side benefits going on. Or if you've just encountered a lot of Pokemon to catch, farming for IVs and stuff, like a lot of things end up opening up. But now we can talk about targeting a Pokemon specifically. So let's say I'm going for a Drifloon, but there's just so many Duskulls spawning around. I think Drifloon in this weather is like a 10, it seems like much less than 10% spawn, maybe it's 5. Either way, I can now encounter it, and here's a hidden mechanic we did not know about in Pokemon Sword and Shield, that after you, a, after you battle a Pokemon, it becomes more common to encounter. And it doesn't really seem like there's any chaining, it doesn't really seem like it gets more complex than that. And even on the Pokemon website, they say for a short period of time. So I battle it, and now if I accidentally run into a Ghastly or Duskull, it's not going to make it towards harder to find Drifloon again, it's just the odds have increased. I guess that means it gets even better and even better when there's a high chance of them spawning to begin with, because then it starts to cloud, like just crowd out all of the other rare Pokemon spawns. So yeah, after doing like w one lap and barely finding a Drifloon, we do a third of a lap, or we just go into the next patch, and there's another Drifloon waiting for us. So it seems to have that four spawn mechanic, kind of like Pokemon Let's Go, just not as insane. As long as you just stay encountering Drifloon every once in a while, you're going to keep encountering Drifloon, but it's not like at a 10 catch combo, they start spawning guaranteed every time or anything like that. So it still gets a little weird, but now I'm just kind of building up the combo, getting closer to the next tier of effects, which is also going to be shiny, well actually shiny odds start at 50, and then the brilliant is going to be 1.3 times. So that's like a weird aspect from the data mine. It, was, it suggested that there was a chance for these effects to happen, but just guaranteed, and even on the Pokemon website, it clarifies that you don't need to do any kind of comboing, you just do it, and that's like, that's really cool for the species of Pokemon. But now we can talk about some of the other things, because chain fishing is nuts. And I want to really try this out, because at 25 combo, it makes it sound like there's a 100% chance of having a Brilliant Aura, which would suggest that the base chance is 6%, because 25 plus Brilliant Pokemon have a 16.6 .6 times chance of spawning. Now, if it's still like 1 in 2, then that means 3%, and if it's 1 in 4, then that means 1.5%, so we can kind of find the base odds and then break it down from there. But what that kind of tells me 
is that we're looking at you know seven ish percent at 1.3 times more after 20 encounters doubling it to like over 10 or something it's kind of weird but the chain fishing is chain fishing now it doesn't really say anything about shiny pokemon uh yeah you can also find brilliant pokemon by fishing in the wild area the number of times you've battled any one species won't matter at all for fishing instead you'll need to defeat many pokemon consecutively no matter what species appears so let's just go and find a nice place to fish and let's get a combo so it's like chain fishing you can't really do anything to break it can't run away from pokemon you just have to battle and also catching a pokemon ends the chain so if you get like a really desirable pokemon it's over until then you also get just like tons of farming i actually don't really know where all the fishing spots are in the wild area i'm probably going to scare the fish off because i'm riding the bike too close to the water come on game show me some there we go uh yeah so you can also like try to find good places to fish for pokemon and I guess we get it started. I'll see you guys in 25 encounters. But you need to focus, and you need to be on the ball. I don't, I don't think this has anything to do with shiny hunting, which is kind of unfortunate. Yay, Magikarp. Yeah, after building a, a streak, I feel like it's still very, very low odds of finding a brilliant Pokemon. I think 6% was very ambitious when you just kind of, like, go out through the wild area and randomly one pops up. Feels like it'd be a lot more common if it was 6%. We probably already have seen one in this video or something, but... I've got a 25 combo, and seems to be pretty rare. So this is why I've noticed that, you know, you wait for a bit, it comes back, it spawns back, and then you do it. I mean, I'm starting to wonder if it's even 1%, because then 16% would be a 1 in 6 chance. It doesn't even feel like I'm getting a 1 in 6 chance during my catch combo for this. And I wonder if there's even any, like, shiny odds benefit, because according to the Pokemon website, they don't make any note of it. I wonder how that still applies for, like, the species and stuff because it's like successful hoax versus species, who even knows? And then if you fail to reel in Pokemon, catch a Pokemon, run away from Pokemon, leave the area, turn off your game, then the chain will break. But does that mean like, it says leaving the area. It doesn't seem like it's as strict as older chain fishing to where like if you just left the spot or moved at all, it would kill the chain. But this chaining isn't as high rewards or high stakes because it used to be like one in 60 odds. If you count like 30 Pokemon in a row from Chain Fishing and Pokemon XY, Omega Green Alpha Sapphire, you got it down to like 1 in 30 odds. So I'm wondering how that is. Or also if like you run, like if you scare off a Pokemon spot, if that does anything. Or maybe now I can like walk around and maybe try to spawn new fishing spots that end up having the uh, Brilliant Aura more commonly. Well, this yellow aura suggests that it doesn't break. I even like left the uh, area, like not the actual wild area, but you know, I, re I went to the. Uh, other region of the wild area or something now I came back and this is like a yellow spot so it says zero hooks can still have a brilliant Pokemon chance to appear and at this point you know if I break the chain that's just gonna suck so I think it's more about farming watts but it's not like I thought you know it was gonna be just like every single time you're fishing up watt Pokemon you're getting 300 watts every 30 seconds and then you have like the craziest farming method doesn't seem that way but also seems fairly forgiving i feel like flying is probably going to break it or something but i can walk around this lake i can go into the other areas I can even like bike around for a bit and i'll still have a good chance of running into the yellow i don't know if it's faster than just like sitting there and hoping that it keeps on catching and respawning and stuff there's like a nice little batch of pokemon over here even though i'm on a bike so it's probably just going to scare them off but you know you can run through here then if you go up the hill it'll also show so there's one more coming up no yellow and then i made it into this is what i meant by like next area so i went from this part to Motostoke, or at least East Lake Axwell. Then I can still run around and try to look for some uh, yellow aura. I don't know. Maybe that one was RNG. Chaining still needs to be figured out a bit more. I'm going to catch that flare around later once I get to the bottom of getting myself a ditto. So, so far, it really seems like this whole strong Pokemon mechanic is a very casual feature. That if someone just wants to go on a long shiny hunting chain or do something insane like that, they're going to come out of it with quite a lot of reward. Or if they're just like, they just want to enjoy the game and have fun and they end up doing something kind of specific, you know? I could just imagine someone that doesn't care about trying to get an IV or some watt farming and they'll just fish. And they'll just keep fishing. And they'll keep fishing. And then maybe the yellow entices them and they keep getting to the bottom of it or something. I think it is... It's, it's just kind of one of those things where, as a high-efficiency player, I see that it's just better to do max raid battles, farm the ditto raids, and then try to use that to get what I'm looking for. Some tells me that Heatmore is, like, a rare spawn, and I should grab it. And I think it's going to be the same for ditto. When I first heard about this, I'm like, ooh, 
now that I know that encountering a Pokemon makes more of those Pokemon spawn, it sounds like it might be worth it to just kind of go for natures on Ditto. That if I catch a ton of 3 IV Ditto, eventually I have all the natures for them, and I'll be able to do that in a short amount of time than it takes to do all the resets for the uh, max raid battle. And I don't think that's going to be the case because of how rare the yellow ore is. Even with the 16 times chance likelihood in the single fishing spot, that's not a lot. So I'm wondering if they're trying to offset that as well. That if I'm having like 10 Pokemon spawn the overworld with double the chance, so based off of this right here, you know, there's all kinds of tons of Pokemon in the overworld, so 2x the likelihood more Pokemon, that means the chain fishing actually doesn't give more yellow aura it just kind of rewards you inside that feature if you're going for the chaining and since it doesn't seem to impact shiny odds doesn't seem like there's too much value to the chain fishing as well and i'm starting to wonder if ditto even spawns on harsh sunlight or anything like that either way i think max raid battles are still the way to go this is kind of a cool idea but i think it's just kind of like for people that have played the game and they're casually like shiny hunting and they're trying to play it like let's go and they're just in like a really obsessive grind that people find themselves in they get some kind of benefit out of it, which is more than other Pokemon games, but I don't think there's anything targetable here that you can really try to abuse into some kind of craziness. But we already have really good stuff anyway, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Uh, thank you very much for watching.